Hey everyone, welcome along. This is another Jesus in Politics interview. I'm Pastor Tim Bushong from Syracuse Baptist Church. With me tonight is the infamous Andrew Isker, author of one book on Christian nationalism and another one which rocks the Boniface option. Hi, Andrew. Hello. Hello, Tim. How are you? I'm good. Welcome to Indiana. Welcome to my back porch. <laughs> this is where I do a lot of my living. <laughs> yeah, yeah, awesome. Right awesome. out here. Well, I'm so uh, happy to have you coming to Northern Indiana this year. This is our fifth annual conference, Jesus in Politics. Um, it's on October 19th, which is a Saturday, so everyone can make it. I've got the information to sign up in the uh, com box below. So make sure you sign up quickly because we're filling up fast. Children are hungry, my dog needs a bone. I'm out of a job now, and I'm just driving home an hour after sundown. Andrew, it's 2024. Uh, do you know where your kids are tonight? <laughs> yeah, they're all downstairs right now. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Something, uh, something interesting has happened in the last month on my X feed, and I keep getting these uh, promotional videos from the Harris Walsh campaign. And it, <laughs> and it is like every time they say something that's supposed to be outrageous and, Oh, I can't believe it. I'm mm -hmm. sitting there going, mm, yeah, I was already going to vote for him. You don't have to sell yeah, him to me. That's right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. The, the one that I saw recently that, that was probably the, the funniest to me was, Oh, they called FDR a socialist too. <laughs> Back check true. Yeah. <laughs> Back check true. Uh, yeah. Right. Um, yeah. Yes, that's exactly right. I saw you and uh, CJ's uh, top ten list of people you're not supposed to like. Yeah. You know, in yeah. America, Robert Taft. I was like, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. the son of the president Robert Taft, but he was a he was the last true old school conservative. What yeah. What did they say? Uh, what was the the comment? Uh, now we have three three branches of the legislature. We have the Senate, the House, and Robert Taft. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, almost yeah. like with Ron Paul. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, so what do you see? I, there's a, there's a couple of things that have been on the horizon recently, and uh, and I want to keep this in the realm of mm -hmm. Christianity and our relationship to outside culture, and more specifically to politics. If we define politics as the affairs of the city or the the affairs of the people. Mm -hmm. Why do you think it is that so many Christians have this uh, reticency to even be involved in politics, let alone uh, try to win and try to influence mm -hmm. society through the office of the civil magistrate? Do you have any 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 thoughts on that? I'm sure you do. Yeah, I I think a lot of it is uh, it, it's longstanding antipathy to to using civil power in any way i, I think it's part of evangelical culture for the la for certainly my lifetime you, your lifetime as well um yeah. that that we've been told no jesus jesus doesn't care about power he doesn't yeah. care about <laughs> about this or world he cares about right his kingdom is not of this world right he doesn't yeah. care about this at all and and so that means we just have to surrender everything and and let tim walls um cut off the genitals of children, right? And, 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 and babies and, 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 and not else. quite yeah. so bad, but we need to let him uh, have his cops shoot paintballs at yeah. you. If you're sitting on your uh, front porch. Yeah. Yeah. You're breaking the, you know, you're breaking the COVID curve, yeah. right? You can't yeah. be doing that. And yeah, I mean, all, all of that stuff, like we, we, it, it is, um, and, and that, that comes a lot from, you know, the leadership, a lot of pastors, a lot of influential evangelical figures use that kind of language. Uh, but the instincts of ordinary Christians and and people in the pews, thankfully, counters that they hmm. they actually care about their communities. They care about their nation. They care about uh, the political order, and they they want to live in in nice communities. They want to live in a in a place that 
um, that is in, insane. And, yeah. and, and so they actually go vote. And, and, and in the you know 70s and 80s, you began to see, you know, evangelicals begin to engage at least on the issue of abortion and on, on social issues uh, to a certain yeah. extent. But, but it was always very narrow. It wasn't, um, it wasn't a, a, a big picture cohesive engagement in politics as a whole. It was just right. a very narrow single you know issue, which of course obviously is an important one and, and certainly better than nothing. Yeah. But we can see the, the results of that is that because they didn't engage in politics as politics, right? We haven't been able to um, move the ball forward at all in, in any, in anything, everything has been overtaken by the left uh, and overtaken by, uh, by the by managerial politics, right? A managerial system that that yeah. dominates all of all of life. I, I would have to yeah. I would have to ask the question of what percentage of the American population is literally being subsidized by the rest of the population. Yeah, I mean that was it's the famous, be like, Mitt, Mitt Romney quote, right? Like forty seven percent of the country <laughs> doesn't contribute to anything, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah well, let, it, let alone massive. receives uh, uh, food stamps and welfare and and WIC and all these different things, which have to be paid for somehow. Somebody's working. Yeah, yeah so the percentage where 100% of their existence is subsidized by everyone else is mm-hmm. is got to be significant. I mean, yeah. maybe 20, 30% of the country. And that, that's that's not even taking into account how many people are here Right, that shouldn't be here. Right, they the official number is like twelve million, but it's it's <laughs> got to be maybe four or five times that high, man. And yeah, and and it's like you you can't sustain any any society when when you have that. And and I mean these these are problems that I mean re- regardless of whatever happens um, in November, right? These are problems that are going to continue on uh, for decades and yeah. and continue to get worse. And have to be resolved right. in in very painful ways, um, and, and, and because there there simply isn't a will to deal with them. Um, I mean, just by, Im- by just imagine in our in our federal system, if there were ten, I want to be like Abraham and you yeah. know God. Yeah, yeah, if yeah. there's only if there were only ten state governors who were willing to say no, no, we we don't need your money. Um, yeah. Uh, we ha- they they still have to pay out. I I remember back mm-hmm. back when Ron Paul was running and oh yeah. uh, the uh, the NBC morning Sunday morning host. We taped it of course because we were in church Sunday morning. Yeah, yeah. He tried yeah. to he tried to hang Ron Paul on the earmarks issue because he's opposed mm-hmm. to earmarks and yet he takes earmarks. Yeah. And of course Ron Paul said I'd I'd be a, the poorest representative in the world if I didn't because we don't have any choice of the out blow of state yeah. money to the federal yeah, we coffers. Can't, we can't stop that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. I, so, so I've got to get something back for, you know, some return on our investment. Yeah. But yeah. Oh my stars, we're so, yeah. we're so far beyond what the authors of the constitution, the declaration, the articles of Confederate. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're so far down the road from that. Yeah. As to, I think we could, we could generally say, uh, all this talk about saving democracy and saving the constitution constitution is a dead letter. No, yeah. no one takes it seriously until it helps their cause. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It is. Um, it's a, this vestigial feature of the American political system where, you know, it gets referenced uh, regularly, but it, it is, it certainly isn't followed at least the design of, of the original intent of it is it's completely gone. Right. Yeah. yeah we still have, we still it's like decorating vestiges. the decorating the yeah. tombs of your you know, of your forefathers. Yeah, we still have the offices that it describes and the procedure yeah. and and all of those things. But the reality is, you have you have a regime in Washington D.C. that dictates everything for the entire country. Uh, the majority of it is totally um, not responsible to the people, right? Meaning they it's it's unelected. There's no Right. right. There's no recourse that anybody has, right, with uh, all of these agencies, right? There's no, you, you don't get to vote for the director of the FBI or the tens <laughs> of thousands of people that work for it or the IRS or, or yeah. every single agency. 
And these agencies, right, like OSHA or the EPA or whatever, like they just want to write ag- agriculture. What a yeah, they get to write their own doctor. laws. Yeah, right. they get to write all their own laws. Yeah, right. And it's called well, it's the administrative state, and they they get they get to make regulations and things like that. What the original Constitution that that power was only given to Congress. <laughs> right. <laughs> only they could make laws because <laughs> they represent the people. Yeah, and instead. Uh, and and all all the things you know regulating various industries or whatever that that, that all fell to the states right the yeah. states were sovereign in these ways they could determine right. what what they did and they want to do um well a little conflagration that, back in 1861 yeah. changed all that yeah that ends and then um you know two generations later you you have um you know the new deal and and the new deal oh. uh completely completely eviscerates whatever remnants of constitutional order were left and then right. by the time you have Lyndon Johnson and the great society then then you have mass democracy and it's just the looting phase right yeah. that's what it's been since then is I tell you a little story about uh, the the new deal and the Bushong family so the the way the story goes is you know no tv then it's just radio and mm-hmm. my grandfather and my dad and his two brothers and grandma lived in a farm about half a mile north of where I live now. And so they're milking cows and the radio is playing all the time. You know, it soothes the mm-hmm. savage breasts. So, <laughs> cows <laughs> cows let themselves get milked if you can hear some music or something. Yeah. Well, so, so, somehow an announcer came on and they said, well, we're in order to uh, regulate and increase milk prices, we're going to be pouring out milk you know there's this government program to do this you know mm. I, I guess my grandpa who wouldn't say boo if his mouth was full of mud just went ballistic yeah. livid yeah. They, they just apoplectic what wow well, yeah. yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah the economy is something yeah. you can tinker with man yeah yeah Oh, it's, it's, it's so, I mean, all, all of it was so insane and, and everything we have now, um, has its, has its origins then and has only metastasized since then. Yeah. Um, and there's, there's no control over it. I mean, you look at Congress, like Congress. I'd rather not, uh, but okay. Yeah, I know. But they have, I mean, extremely low approval ratings and things like that. Um, yet they continue to be reelected. Uh, yeah. the incumbent, if the incumbent stands for reelection, he or, or she, uh, always gets reelected at like yeah. 90 plus percent clip. And um, they don't, they don't actually do anything, right? They yeah. all, like literally, I mean, you, you have it just this like last week, they just pass continuing resolutions to keep spending going and the government, yeah. the rest of the government just runs itself. Right. It's, it's, <laughs> yeah. uh, it, it, it doesn't really, they're, they're kind of um, this dead letter, right? They themselves as an institution, Right, they don't really matter other than this perfunctory uh, job that they do. Uh, the the administrative state and and you know if you want to call it the deep state or whatever, like they they run everything, right? Yeah. That's 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 it. They just whatever whatever that they're told to spend money on, they do. Uh, well, th- well, think about the, spend- the the last uh, the 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 last the oldest time with I think of in terms of deep state and involvement and. And getting rid of political enemies, mm-hmm. I was thinking JFK. Yeah, you yeah. know, yeah. Compared compared to Republicans today, he would be a raving right wing economic lunatic. Yeah, I, I know, and and that's I mean that which is which is absolutely wild, right? Yeah. And I mean, even even just looking at at someone like like Trump, um, I mean, you could, you look at him, and he his his platform is is basically indistinguishable from bill clinton's in the exactly right? exactly um, other than i mean clinton was much more uh pursuant of uh, pursuing uh, globalism yeah uh but uh aside from that right, that's that's more or less what he is is like a 1990s democrat and yep. he's treated <laughs> like the most far right figure that has ever existed <laughs> in well compared history. to the modern progressive yeah, yeah. he kind of is uh, and to the like modern conservative or Republican. And, and, and so, you, you know, you look at, at all these things, like we, when I, when I hear people say, well, we just need to get back to the constitution. Right. And, and I'm like, you know, I, I got to get used to, you know, Southern lingo. And so it's just like, bless, 
Bless your, Bless your heart. <laughs> Bless your heart. Uh, you just don't know. Like you, you think like, Oh, it's, it's so simple to just do that. Yeah. Um, and so, and, so run you know, this paper right here. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's like, yeah, this is, this is something CJ, you know, says all the time is to the act of getting back to the constitution, right? If you were to actually pursue that politically and had the, the political will to, to bring that about, everyone would think of you as the most severe authoritarian who has mm-hmm. ever lived to, to yeah. do that, that you would, you would be called an authoritarian to, to go back to the constitution because it would require a uh, massive political force to be wielded to, to bring it, to make that happen. It's yeah. uh, it, it, people, I mean, people really haven't even thought about that. Like what, what it yeah. would actually take to bring that about, to make that happen. And it would be, People look at like Nayib uh, Bukele in El Salvador, and, and that would <laughs> that by comparison, it would be not like he would be he he would be nothing right. compared to what it would take to bring the U.S. back to the Constitution. And, right, and it's so, like he's put he's putting the the state of Indiana back on course, you know, population yeah. wise. I don't yeah. know, I, yeah. I don't know how yeah, but even smaller. I think, yeah, actually. Yeah. yeah, and and it's like no, um, it would be. I mean, it would be the most severe uh, political counter revolution to have ever happened in human history to bring the U.S. back to the <laughs> Constitution. Like, the people, people haven't even thought about what that what that would actually mean, and and, uh, and it's like, well, I, yeah, I, if you put it that way, then yeah, let's let's go back to the Constitution. But if you, if <laughs> yeah. you think it's just like, oh, we got to get, we just need term limits in Congress, and that'll fix it. And oh yeah, like, no, just no, to tweak you, a little here, yeah. adjust a little there. Like you're rearranging the deck chairs on the Titanic when you talk about those things. It's yeah, or e- yeah. E- even the people are like, well, we need a convention of the states. Like we need the states. Like that's something that the Constitution. Would, and it's like, have you looked at the states? Have you Man. looked at the governors that we have and the legislatures that we right. have? Right. Right. If if you brought them together to have a constitutional convention, right? One, they would just devise a constitution that makes what we have right now work on paper and and bring it not you know bring the nominal law. Uh, in to cover everything we already have, right. it wouldn't, you wouldn't be getting rid of all of the departments and and you know ninety five percent of the federal government like you should. Right. It would it would just be it it would it would be what we have now only um, you know legally now justified, and and so now like so a lot of it is just people have not have not thought about politics as you know a cohesive whole. Um, they think that's of politics right. as it's just a, you know, a handful of issues where we just need to elect the right people to, to fight for, you know, the second amendment and pro-life causes <laughs> and things like that. And it's like, no, politics is friends and enemies and yeah. you, you have enemies and your enemies understand politics that way. Better than you. Way better than we do. Yeah. They understand that we are the enemy and you look at them talk. Like there was some Congresswoman today who was basically saying that, all of Trump's voters are you know, white nationalists and Christian nationalists and uh, and domestic terrorists and things like that. Mm-hmm. And, it, and it seems, you know, crazy and unhinged. And, and of course it is, but that's an accurate picture of how they. Oh yeah. Yeah. Us, right? But it's, they, it's, they, they uh, it's Ren's, people as their enemies. Right. It's yeah. Ren's negative world. Yeah. We, we yeah. have to, we have to acknowledge the fact yeah. that this is the reality and let's let's go back to something you said earlier about um, you know Christians looking at this first in bits and pieces. Mm-hmm. Well, of course, I'm a Schaefer guy who is a Kuiper guy, mm-hmm. and we're looking at things in bits and pieces rather than as a totality. Mm-hmm. And the other thing is this this absolutely misguided notion that when Jesus says, "My kingdom is not of this world," immediately following that statement. He gives the context of what he's talking about. Yeah. Else yeah. would my servants fight. Yeah. He's not saying, yeah. I don't give a rip yeah. about how yeah. much your grocery bill is. Yeah. Or yeah. how many foreign yeah. wars your government entangles you in and drafts your sons and perhaps mm-hmm. daughters, if some mm-hmm. people have their way, mm-hmm. to go off literally, literally, the you put a pin in a ball. It's the opposite side of the world. Yeah. There's where your son is going to go die in service mm-hmm. to the military industrial complex. Yeah. When's yeah. when's the last time and think about think about this. You know, I I know 
Pearl Harbor was attacked. By the way, my wife and I went there in 17 to visit our daughter working in, in missions. And yes, it was definitely a sobering moment to stand on mm-hmm. top of the USS Arizona. Mm-hmm. And if they if they play Moonlight Serenade by Glenn Miller, I'm going to lose all my cookies and cry like a <laughs> girl. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That being said, when's the last time that our armed forces ever defended America's freedom? It's a, <laughs> it's a tough question. Um, uh, yeah. Um, so, something about Battle of New Orleans? Yeah, may, maybe. I mean, um, I would, you know, I would, I would say it has been maybe, maybe that long. I mean, you could, um, you could make the argument uh, about the war between the states. At least one side was fighting <laughs> for yes uh, the political freedom um, uh-huh. of their people. Um, and yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, like the the whole. The only know, reason I bring that up is because yeah. we are, as we speak, people don't people don't realize this that what you wrote in Boniface Option, um, fake and gay, clown world, bug man, this yeah. is all true. Everything yeah. is so upside down. I was born in 1960. Yeah. I remember when the Democrats are the they're the party of free speech. Yeah. Everybody's got a right to their ideas, right? Mm-hmm. They're the party of let that let that printing press fly, you know? Yeah. Yeah. They're the party yeah. of get us out of Vietnam. Peace. Yeah. Peace movement, yeah. of course, was tied into, you know, the Soviets as, as well. Of course. Everything's yeah. upside down. Yeah. yeah. Now they want to shut down free, free speech and they're yeah. the warmongers. Yeah. Along yeah. with the neocons. Yeah. I, I do not understand how people can look at this and go, yeah, but. It's a woman. Wouldn't that be better? You <laughs> yeah, know? Yeah. They want to go to war, man. Yeah. Yeah, they do. I mean, even like at, at the moment we're recording this, right, they are arming Ukraine with with long range missiles, uh, which right, the Ukrainians don't have any capability to to use those. Right. It'll all be it'll all be NATO coordinating it, you know, picking targets, you know, firing the missiles. I mean, they'd be it'd be Americans or you know, Western countries that we subsidize. Uh, uh-huh. Who, doing, who doing don't all we subsidize? Oh my goodness. Uh, anyway, actual, actual yeah. Americans mostly. Oh, that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody but us. <laughs> um, and, and, and so like, yeah, that, that is, um, it, it, we could be, I mean, the October surprise could be a massive expansion of, of the conflict in Ukraine. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, and, and, and I mean, I look at the the election, like the main issue that they that they clearly care about, right? The main issue, the only issue they care about is Ukraine, right? That's yeah. that's it. They don't care about anything other than that. I mean, they'll talk about uh, abortion and things like that in order to gin up support. Yeah. But, yeah. but in terms of like what what matters to them at the end of the day, it's it's Ukraine. And what a coincidence a week after Donald Trump says he would bring an end to that war, mm. a Ukrainian activist or, a, or an American pro Ukraine war activist <laughs> tries to um, take him out, tries to, tries to kill him. <laughs> right. Yeah, tries, tries to kill him. Um, right. Yeah. Ukraine is like, it's not, it's not a coincidence that, that that guy um, who has all these weird connections yeah. that are coming out. Um, right. I mean, he, he went to Congress and we should find out, maybe we never will, right? Who, who did he all meet with and Capitol Hill, right? Which Democrats, which Republicans did he meet with? Um, what connections does he have when he went over to Ukraine? And now, I mean, all the disavowals have started. Oh, he's never been part of any of the stuff that we were doing. Oh my goodness. He's, he's trying to get Afghans to sign up to get ground up in the machine. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. The guy's it's a like, nut. And now his and this, son, and this is, his son just got busted for having. Yeah. Kitty, you know, yeah, on the old yeah. hard drive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and was a roadie for Taylor Swift or something, you know, oh. and it's like, and, and, and this, you know, Trump is two for two in potential, you know, attempted assassins that were in BlackRock videos. Like, Interesting. What, what, what are the odds? Yeah. What a coincidence. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's bizarre. Um, 
And 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 so like it's I don't, I don't think it's a coincidence at all that he goes on the debate stage and says right, they ask him, point, you want Ukraine to win the war like all good Americans want uh, Ukraine huh. to win the war. And he's like, no, I want the war to end. I want it right. to be over. And, you know, I was just um, I went to one of uh, Tucker's um, events in, in Philadelphia on, on Monday, mm-hmm. or in Reading, Pennsylvania, and he gave I don't know if the monologue was recorded, uh, but the, the the speech that he gave. Uh, was all about that because Zelensky had just come to Scranton uh, to sign artillery shells with Governor Josh Shapiro to stump for Kamala Harris. And sign artillery oh, shells. Oh yeah, they're, they're autographing artillery shells that were going to be used to blow up Russians. And Man. and it's this really disgusting. I mean, one to have a you know foreign president involved in our politics at all is. Uh, is infuriating, uh, but, then, but then also, yeah, but <clears throat> yeah, 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 it is. I mean, <laughs> you know, some foreign leader came here to stump for, for Trump. Right. But uh, <laughs> aside from that, uh, you, you have, um, you, you just have th- this issue and, and Tucker said it plainly that from the get go, this, this was a war that Ukraine never could win. Right. No matter how many hundreds of billions of dollars the United States gives Ukraine, they, they simply do not have enough people to sustain a war against Russia, which has 100 million more people than they do. Mm-hmm. Right? It's just basic, mm-hmm. basic math. And mm-hmm. and like the entire like millennia of just war tradition and even before it's, you know, formulated by people like Thomas Aquinas and things like that um, or, or Augustine or anybody else. Right. You you count the cost. Like if you if if you engage in, in a war that you know you can't win, that there there's zero chance you're going to win, and you get all of your people killed and your your country is destroyed, that that makes you an evil person. Right. That's not that. In fact, that's that's against one of the main tenets. You have to think that you can win. You have to have this yeah. re, re, reasonable expectation of success. I mean, even if it's. Even if it's you know sixty forty, you're going to lose. Like a forty percent chance you could win is is pretty good odds. But this is this is zero percent chance. Yeah, and yeah. and maybe a million Ukrainian men are are dead at this yeah. point. And uh, you know, I'm I'm, I'm glad you brought wounded. up. I'm glad you brought up just war. Guess what I'm preaching on Sunday, as an extension of the sixth commandment, just uh, war. Yeah, good. let me read. Let me yeah. read you a quote. This is from uh, Reverend Peter McKenzie now passed away. He, he lived during the 20th century. He was a Presbyterian from New Zealand. And he writes this, God determines the appointed times of the nations and the timing of their rule. No nation has the authority to invade another, to change its government, even if it is evil. A nation cannot even be invaded to establish democracy. Democracy must come from the hearts of the people. It cannot be enforced from the outside. Yeah. And of course, most attempts by great powers like us to establish mm-hmm. a de- democratic government have failed because the spiritual yeah. forces haven't been defeated. Yeah. They end up in tyranny. Yeah. Schaefer, Schaefer brought this up yeah. many times. He goes, what, yeah. what were we doing after World War II? Yeah. This not yeah. a just, it is not a just war. Yeah. And yeah. by us, and Andrew, by us saying that, you know what our interlocutors will say. Oh, so therefore you must be in favor of who. Pro Russia, you must be. It's like, no, I'm. No. I'm no. pro America. I'm pro right. my my people. I right. we have we have zero interest in any of it, one way or the other. Right. And w- unfortunately, the people who rule over us have inserted us into this kind. Con- mm-hmm. And not, not, not only merely inserted us into it, they they've brought the entire thing about. Like that's the thing that yeah, I mean, 2014. Yeah, when you have people that are are heavily heavily propagandized, they don't they don't know they don't know that in 2014 <laughs> the Obama administration overthrew the government of Ukraine. Yeah, and brought all of this about. Like they you know, have no that, idea. You know, that was whatsoever. during during that time period. I'd been um, I'd been red red pilled on the, all this. Well, black pilled on the the, <laughs> the the old the old narrative for for mm-hmm. almost ten years. Yeah, and we were watching the news on probably online. I was like, "That's funny. Where'd all those orange T-shirts come from? Yeah. Overnight, they yeah. just appeared. 
crazy, right? Wow. Where'd they come? Yeah. And the banners, it's all orange. Isn't that great? Yeah. Insane. Yeah, it's, it, 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 all of it. I mean, it was the, the state department. I mean, you have Victoria Newland in WikiLeaks. Like they, they leaked a phone call with her where she's bragging about what they did there. Like the, it, was, it was all them. And yep. I mean, then you have, you know, Joe Biden sent his son to go loot the country and many other politicians did the same with their children. And yeah. like, that's, that's what happened. And, and so then, right. What these, these, con- these uh, republics, right. Uh, broke off in the East and Eski Luhansk. And right. said, we don't we like this fake government. You we didn't up. vote for this, right. No, we voted for exactly. the other guy and this is not a legitimate government. So we right. are seceding. And yeah. then the Ukrainian military for, for close to a decade starts bombing them, sending in, you know, paramilitary, you know, neo-Nazi groups to murder and torture and rape. Yeah. And no one has any idea about that. No one yeah. has any idea that we funded all of it. And at, at by 2022, right, the red line, I mean, Trump brought this up at the debate that they had a, a you know, so-called peace summit in, uh-huh. in, and Three days before the invasion, they send Kamala there. And what does Kamala say? Absolutely, unequivocally, Ukraine is going to join NATO. And yeah. the Russians said that we can't, we cannot allow that. That if that sounds Ukraine like joins, something you said you weren't going to do. Yeah, if Ukraine joins NATO, our our country will cease to exist. You'll have you'll have hypersonic nuclear weapons right. seconds <clears throat> away from a third of the population of Russia. Right. We we will not exist as a sovereign independent nation anymore if you do that. Right. And and so any any country, any country anywhere, if you set up co- conditions like that where a hostile alliance is is, is uh, brings a neighboring state that close to you and sets up um, military divisions and and nuclear weapons that close to your borders, right? No mm-hmm. one would tolerate that. Right. No one. No one. Right. We wouldn't. No country would. Right. America, China, any every country would say absolutely not. We cannot allow that to happen, and we will invade that country to prevent it from happening. And but just just think about, and so, no one has any idea about any that, that right. entire argument. And, yeah. and in fact, not only are they ignorant of that, but they've been propagandized to put the little blue and yellow flag on their Twitter yeah. feeds. And yeah. I'm at I'm at yeah. the point now, you know, for for the last couple of years, pronouns in bio. Who yeah. cares what you think? Yeah, I'm like yeah. Ukraine flag and bio. I don't know. Yeah. You can't think. This is a person you know? who is whose mind is totally shaped by the television. Yeah. Right? That, that yeah. is not capable of an independent thought. And, yeah. and, 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 and I, I look at it and it's like, I don't, I, I look at what has happened and I'm not, I'm, I'm not pro Russian or pro Putin or any, anything like that. I, <clears> I, <throat> I think he's probably a really terrible guy. I wouldn't want him to be the ruler of my, <laughs> country i wouldn't want um I wouldn't want, to, right. I wouldn't want to leave in russia right i wouldn't want yeah. I, I wouldn't want yeah. that uh but at the same time right it doesn't matter who the president of that country is or who is ruling them no country would tolerate that happening yeah and the aggressor is is the united states right yeah. the aggressor is the american regime dude i try like, to that's tell what's happened i yeah. try to tell my some of my old Boomer friends, like you guys, you know, we, we like to, I'll tell you what, this is, this is funny because growing up in my household, you know, dad got drafted and he didn't go to Korea because he got in a motorcycle wreck, but he was Korean war and my cousin Vietnam, my cousin's husband, Vietnam. And so the narrative was always, Hey, you need to go do your duty, right? Mm -hmm. You serve your country. Every one of those people except for my i can't i can't say what rank he holds cuz you never leave the <laughs> navy every one of them has now acknowledged the the utter fallacious nature of the yeah do your duty serve your country go across yeah. the globe you know yeah and so i was i was thinking too uh you know i was i was propagandized in in a in a certain way so, you know, anytime on the CBS Friday night movie, if if Patton was on, oh, we're watching Patton. We're <laughs> going to make popcorn. Yeah. We're yeah. watching Patton. Yeah. Uh, Kelly's Heroes, we're watching Kelly's Heroes. Not quite the same, but mm-hmm. uh, The Dirty Dozen. Oh, yeah. Can't 
you know, watch that last scene where the grenades get <laughs> the drop, dropped yeah, and yeah, yeah, Jim yeah, Brown yeah. does his yeah. Cle- Cleveland Browns imitation. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And one one German with a grease gun takes him down. Oh, Jim Brown. Oh, no. no. Didn't make it. You know? <laughs> then you got the other where Eagles dare and uh, uh, guns and never own. All these, you know, this was, this was my bread and butter, right? Mm-hmm. And so now when, when I look back on that, I'm like, okay, that was, that was whitewashed. Uh, I think the yeah. allies, the allies, did a good thing taking Hitler out, but we did a bad thing at Yalta, where we let mm-hmm. the communists dictate our own foreign policy. Yeah. Churchill, Roosevelt gave into Stalin, and m- most of Europe got handed over to the communists. I met a woman one time. I was tuning her piano. This is a great story because you'll love this. So all my stories are: I was tuning this person's piano, right? Well, this it was it was out in the boondocks in a house trailer. But it was all very nicely appointed, very well taken care of. And uh, I walk in and she has what is obviously not a Hoosier accent whatsoever. She sounded Russian. Well, she's from Ukraine and she's older. So this is like 92. She's probably 75, you know. And I just being ever the soul of tact, I said, well, you're not from Indiana, are you? No, no, I'm not. I'm from Ukraine. Ukraine. When did you come over? 1946. 19 wow and I'm, I'm okay before I'm done she's telling me how how horrible it was under Stalin and they saw the Germans as liberators and you know oh you can't say that right okay I finished the tuning job her husband comes home this guy six six at the minimum huge bald head. In 92, not everyone shaved their heads. And he goes, so they'll have us the tuning. Oh, I think it's, it took me a couple extra times through, but I think we got it. And he sits down and goes, da, 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 da. yeah, sounds good. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, so we have what are probably classified as Nazis living in the middle of the cornfield in Indiana. <laughs> the, only, the only reason I say that it kind of blew my mind at the time, but I also know that what they said about the Russians was true, and how yeah. horrible a communist were, and how dare you come in contact with the enemy because you don't want to go back because they're going to kill you. You got contaminated. You're no longer doctrinally pure. Well, Andrew, we've been uh, we've been painting a real politic picture, uh, kind of what's actually going on out there. And I think people understand what's at stake this this year. I'm not going to say it's the most important this election ever, but it's pretty important, <laughs> you know. Yeah, we've heard that so many times. So, as pastors, as as uh, men who are convinced that Christ is truly reigning at the right hand of the Father, and will continue to reign until mission accomplished here on earth, until all his enemies are put under his foot and his feet as a footstool. What can we encourage our people? with um you know we know there's some practical things we know uh, part of being a pastor is you have to teach that which is in accordance with sound doctrine and refute those who oppose it so we're going to refute the the big eva guys who want to play footsie with the with the nice Mm -hmm. kids and all that but Mm -hmm. as far as positively uh encouraging your folks uh my folks at syracuse baptist what do you what do you think are some of the just bullet points that we need to make sure and and hit so our people don't yeah. get discouraged and, you know, are encouraged to continue yeah. the fight. Yeah. Excuse me. I think, um, you know, the big, the biggest one is to, to not, I mean, especially when you, when you think about encouraging people to not, um, not do it in this, in this fake way, in this Pollyanna way where, yeah, everything's going to be okay. We're going to be just fine. Yeah. Um, because you need to be accurate with where things stand, where things are. Uh, and that, and that's, that's sometimes the hardest thing where it's like, okay, you've got the people here and reality is way over here and, it, and it's way more discouraging, right? When you confront the reality of, of how bad things are and how difficult the fight is to make things right in our, in our own spheres and our own you know local communities and nationally and, and so forth. Mm-hmm. Um, and right to bring people back to the it's almost like you you have to 
you have to depress them by conf- making them confront reality. <laughs> but then once they do, then you can say, okay, it's not, it's not hopeless. It's not over there. We can actually do things that affect everything around you um, right. and make things better. And, and so I, I think it's almost like a twofold answer, right? Where yeah. it's like, well, number one, we have to be accurate about the way things actually are. Yeah. And, and because most people, they just want to be told that everything's going to be okay. Well, if you just go vote for Donald Trump, uh, things will be fine. Or if you, or if you abstain from voting, you, everything will be fine. God's sovereign right. control. We don't need, he doesn't need us to vote in any particular way to make things right. And it's like, well, no, he's given <laughs> us agency, right? He's yeah. given us responsibility for things. Right. Uh, we, we do have to be responsible stewards with the things that he's given us. And, We're reformed. So, we believe in yeah. the, the means and the ends. He ordains yeah. both. Yes. Yeah, precisely. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, so much of that kind of talk, it's, it's like when, you know, the old, uh, old, old, you know, preacher anecdote about the guy and, and the flood yeah. and, and, <laughs> You know, they sent a boat and then they sent a helicopter and everything. And no, God's going to save me. God's going to no, save me. No, don't worry. And it's like, and <laughs> it's so much like that where it's like, all right, we can, we can fight for things. We can, we, we have means that he's given us at our disposal. It was like, no, God's sovereign. We don't need to do any of that. Right. Uh, oh, it, it drives me crazy. It drives it's me crazy. The worst. It's the worst because you look at different, you look at situations uh, throughout history that are really bad, right? You look at, at Russia in 1917 and I've, I mean, I've read a lot, especially Mm. in the last few years about the Russian revolution and, and how, um, how horrific things really were for so many people. We we shouldn't just say Stalin, just say Lenin and get it over with. Yeah. Wicked, wicked man. And in an entire society that completely collapses and everyone there. Uh, and part of part of why things went so bad is because all the regular normal people thought things actually aren't as bad as they seem. That someone will come and save us and and put things mm-hmm. right. We're going to be okay. Rather than rather than standing up and and defending themselves, they they just rolled over. Yeah. And 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 it, it's um the the disorder and disorganization that occur when when things like that occur. Right. People, people are not ready for, for yeah. how bad things can be. And, and so I don't want people to be in that state where, where they think, you know, they bury their heads in the sand. They think what we've experienced over our lifetimes of normalcy. It's normal. Uh, yeah. Of right. Um, all the food arrives at Walmart. <laughs> um, the shelves are always stocked yep. and I get my mail every day. The, the streets get work done and the, I have power and internet coming to my house and all of that. The, the water is clean and that that's, that's just the way everything normally always is. Yep. And, yep. and we have order. We don't have random violence in the streets. Um, you know, we don't have, um, roving paramilitary units that that come and just loot and kill and rape and things like that but that's what happened in in russia yeah right they the the entire thing collapses and everyone everyone's still thinking things are just gonna be okay things will be fine (laughs) Uh, we can work with these people we could maybe pay them off or buy them off or if we just comply we'll be okay and and we we can't be in that yeah in that state of complacency it's Um, fake yeah. Yeah. And, and, and that's, I mean, honestly, that's, that's kind of where we are at, at this point where things are, are right on the precipice and people, people have no idea um, how, how bad things could get very easily, very yep. quickly. And so I don't want people to be in this, like a, the state of aloofness to how bad things are. Right. Under, under become. false illusion that yeah. the things that happened will continue to happen. And, and, and yeah. And at, at the same time, I don't want people to become just um, go to the other extreme of, of everything is horrible and bad. And they just check out, right. They just think, well, there's nothing I can do. Uh, things are going to be bad. And, and, and I'm just going to, you know, do my prepping and, <laughs> and be okay. I was thinking like, of that. Yeah. No, like you can't just check out either. Like, I don't care yeah. about politics. I'm not going to vote for this guy or that because this guy, you know, Donald Trump is a Zionist or he's, you know, he's bought by, <laughs> he's bought and paid for by people, by bad people too. 
And or he's, and he's not an abolitionist like me. So yeah, I just give up. I I'm give done. up. I'm yep. done. And it's like, no, like politics is a, a it's a whole, yeah. it's not yeah. this one little thing. Um, it's not just this one aspect where, that I care about and then everything will suddenly be better. Uh, it's like, no, you need to make everything better in order to get the one thing that you care the most about to be better. Yeah. Right? That, yeah. That's, that's how politics works. Yeah. And, and so I, I think uh, the material situation, the, the economic situation, the cultural situation, even the spiritual situation in America can improve drastically uh, but it will take it will take a lot of work from a lot of people, a lot of a lot of just regular people, um, the regular Christians that go to church every Sunday, uh, being committed to to doing that work. But we need to and, encourage these yeah. guys, leverage leverage the men, leverage the brain yeah. trust of your of your own church, and and, and the don't people that care about stuff. Right. Like, don't yeah, let yeah. don't let the harpies, the shrill harpies, come in and. Yeah. You know, go to either extreme either. I yeah. I hear you. Yeah. Uh, and, and so, yeah, that's, I mean, that overall, but with everything, I think that that's the most encouraging thing. I think, I think also for you know, just to encourage people to keep their heads that. Um, Don't be reactionary. Yeah. That, that. Um, look look can, what happened when, when, um, when, when the bomb hoaxes hit Springfield, Ohio, who were the uh, first people. Oh, this is how this is what this kind of rhetoric yeah. gets you. Yeah. It was your yeah. Russell Moore, your yeah. Raymond Chan, all and these all people. All of those were fake. All of they them were, were fake. Every, every single one. They couldn't have waited two days to see if it was really true or not. No. Not if it plays not. in their account. No. No, of course no. not. And, and 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 yeah, so I, I think, yeah, not not overreacting to things is is important. And 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 even just you know, focusing on on your own on, on the things that you can actually do. Uh, you know, yeah. working, working hard at your job, uh, working, um, working hard with your family, um, and, and working hard to build the community of, of your church and your local yeah. community, build those bonds. Um, like th those are the things that, that really, really matter. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and doing it with an eye to, you know, larger, uh, political and cultural change, Right. That that's that's how the, the needle gets moved. And and so, yeah, I, I try to encourage people. I mean, some of it is is this the, the job of 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 a pastor is. Is well, one, I mean, to you're, you're preaching God's word, you're preaching the truth. Mm -hmm. And so you have to you have to live in the truth and you have to be comfortable telling people things that. Um, they're going to think are absolutely crazy because yeah. they have been propagandized their entire life to believe things that are just simply not true. Um, I literally had, had someone, uh, I, I said a couple true things and they're like, how rude, how can you be so rude? I'm like, yeah, I'm just well, telling you the truth. If you yeah. think it's rude, that's non. that's on you. That's not, yeah. you know, as yeah, Bodie Bauckham I mean, always says, I, yeah. I didn't write the mail. I just deliver it. You know, yeah. that's a great yeah, saying. I just preached on Ephesians five and six and, <laughs> and it is, and I, I mean, I've just been going through Ephesians and I knew, okay, I'd eventually get there. And, <laughs> and I, I'm just saying like basic things where it's like, okay, well, yeah, men and women are, are different and they have different yeah. roles and how God has designed them. And, and the, the entire world thinks the opposite of this, that yeah. they're totally yeah. the same, except for, you know, <laughs> you know, genitalia and, <laughs> and even, even not even that. Um, mm -hmm. and, and, and so it's like, you, things are so crazy. And I mean, you, you bring up, you know, various, you know, narratives too. Um, we have to be willing to investigate the truth on, yeah. on thing on, on everything. And so, you know, you bring up, I mean, it, it was big over the last month, you know, uh, with Tucker talking to Daryl Cooper about Churchill and, yeah. Like that, that issue um, is is going to continue to be an important one because that is the the founding mythos of of our current order. Mm -hmm. And you need to be like, if you want to, you know, chop down idols, right? You need to be right. willing to confront that one, right? right. Um, you need to be willing to to say, all right, maybe maybe um, this, maybe Doolittle's fire bombings wasn't good. Maybe Dresden yeah. shouldn't have happened. I mean, yeah, maybe maybe, maybe uh, this wasn't a war between um, 
you know, uh, in, in this like Marvel Star Wars sense. Absolute, is, absolute good and absolute, absolute evil, evil. Where it's like, no, these are two great powers in in or multiple great powers in war, and yeah. you, need, you need to you know look at it in a dispassionate passionate way, um, much much more so. Um, yeah. And, and rather so what you're, than what you're saying everything, is everything. Yeah. Tell yeah. the truth. Yeah. And don't don't yeah. be afraid to look truth up front in the face and say, you know, that's an eye. I've had to do that. My goodness. How, how many times over the course of my, especially Christian life, having to re-examine things I held that weren't necessarily so. Yeah. And you, yeah. And, but you have to tr you trust, you trust God, trust yeah. God with it. Yeah. Because Man. you, you know that like you, you know what God's word says is true and you trust his word right. and you trust right. the, the truth of his word and that, Many things that we're told all over the place are are not true and yeah. are in conflict yeah. with God's word, and so you need to be willing to investigate everything mm -hmm. um, in mm -hmm. in order to in order to t to tell your people the truth. And and you see that. I mean, I, I look at like um like that issue in particular, like Russell Moore tweeting out about Churchill, you know, a, a comic book cover of like Captain America. That was, you're he, I'm like, you're making our case, Russ. Yeah, that's like literally what I'm saying is like, you, you were looking at this like a child. Yes. Right. Not as, not as a grown man, not as someone who has the faculties of a man that is able to, to weigh good and evil, you know, and, and have wisdom. Yeah. Right? You're looking yeah. at it as, as like a little kid does. Mm -hmm. And that's, it, it, it's, it's shameful. Honestly, yeah. and and it's like I, I look at I look at stuff like like the same thing with like the Ukraine war, where they they and this is why Tucker and Daryl brought this up is is because the Ukraine war is framed in the exact same way. Yeah, and and, yeah. and if you can't if you can um, overcome the great mythos of our our age and begin to look at things not not as this is this is the great evil and we're the good guys always, um, but rather things are you know, especially on the, the good side. Well, maybe we, maybe we weren't as good as we yeah. think. Maybe we aren't on the side of the angels either. Um, yeah. Maybe, maybe there's nobody good in, oh, in a conflict oh. like this. What if oh. that's possible? Oh, right? now, um, now you're talking uh, biblical doctrine. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, maybe we weren't the good guys either. Right. Maybe mm -hmm. there weren't, you know, there are gradations. Maybe some guys are better than others, but yeah. uh, when you're on the side of Joseph Stalin, right, you're probably Boy, not, I, you're probably not on the side of the angels. All right? you know, I'll be, uh, I'll be honest. I, I'm a, I'm a huge uh, Looney Tunes, Mary, Mary melodies aficionado. I have them, <laughs> the DVDs. I have some of the yeah. forbidden ones. Oh there's, yeah. There's, there an, there's an entire selection that has two discs dedicated to the world war two stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And let me tell you, there, there was a lot of propaganda Oh on, yeah, on the yeah. animated cells. Um, oh, absolutely. The yeah. the one the one I never forget about uh, is the very last scene. It, it shows Joseph Stalin standing there, and the saying is, "Does your tobacco taste different lately?" And it's like, <laughs> you guys, he's <laughs> man. This is a, this is like one of the great murderers of human history. And, and unbelievable. I think he's second. Uh, he's yeah. second to Mao, but yeah. still. Yeah. Oh, my goodness yeah yeah well listen we, yeah. let's uh let's tie this up you're you're coming to indiana you're going to be yeah. speaking at a conference called jesus and politics which are two of the things you're not supposed to talk about at thanksgiving because yeah. grandma yes. grandma's going to get upset <laughs> she's an old yeah. roosevelt democrat you don't understand <laughs> how it was <laughs> one of these days let me, let me let me put this bug in your ear because you you've written a book Mm -hmm. I would like to write a book. I, I got one in the in the works called Reforming <laughs> Grandma's Church. Yeah, I'd like to write a new version of the City Mouse Country Mouse Fable, and uh, and and, <laughs> and tie it into some of the stuff we're dealing with today. But I don't I don't think it's as easy as that. So um, if if you're so inclined, it's a it is such a low price for such a high caliber conference. Yeah. We've got John Harris coming, Andrew Isker. Uh, Rod D. Martin, um, William Wolf, and Rod D. Martin, who you just <laughs> saw lately. What a, what a dynamo. Can't wait for that. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're, we're going to treat you guys well. We've got a, a house rented uh, about five minutes from my house on, on Oakwood. It's next to beautiful Lake Wawasee, largest natural lake in Indiana. 
and we're going to enjoy our time. But I really look forward to hearing from each speaker, and especially you, Andrew. I really loved your book, and I'm Thank I'm you. I'm rereading um, as we speak. It's my kind of morning coffee Bible. Oh, hey, nice. why not why not chop an oak tree down? Right? Okay, that's right. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks a lot. Uh, thanks for taking yeah. some time out to talk to us. Look forward to seeing you in less than a month, everyone. It's coming soon. Jesus shall reign where'er the sun doth his successive journeys run. Uh, be confident in God. He's got this, um, and he's given you lots of work to do. So go get him, Tiger. This is Tim Bushong for Jesus and Politics. See you later.